Hello knitters, Barbara Benson here. I am an independent knitwear designer who also likes to make videos here on my YouTube channel, Watch Barbara Knit. If you'd like to know more about my knitwear designs, please check in the description below. There you will find a link to my Ravelry designer page where you can see all the patterns I have available for you to get and knit up for yourself. Also in the description below, you will find a link to the Watch Barbara Knits Facebook group. We'd love to have you come over and join the group so we can continue the conversations that we start here on the YouTube channel. Um, it is a closed group, group, but just, you know, click join and we will approve you. So today I have a fave five for you. What fave fives are, are I pick a topic a theme and then I look through Ravelry patterns and pick out the five patterns that are grabbing my attention at that very moment. I am not saying that these are the absolute like best representatives. I'm not saying this is better and I'll fight you for it. I'm just saying that when I was looking at patterns, these are the ones that jumped out to me and that I loved and I thought, wow, this would be a really super fun knit. And hopefully it might introduce you to some designers and patterns that you haven't seen before. When I started looking through, uh, I didn't have a theme idea when I started looking, but a couple really jumped out. And so the theme for today's video is my fave five patterns that make me want to learn how to do intarsia. <laughs> So intarsia is actually a color work technique that I have not played with yet. It is a method for putting chunks of color within a broader field of another color, as opposed to stranded, which is doing like a repeated pattern across, or you can actually do an image, but what you're doing is you're carrying two yarns across all the stitches, or as you know, my favorite slip stitch where you're knitting stripes and slipping stitches, intarsia involves you're knitting in one color, you get to the point where the whatever you're making in color starts, and you drop the color you're working on and pick up another color and you twine them somehow and you work that chunk and then you stop and you have to pick up another. So it involves something called bobbins and working with smaller chunks of yarn, each like um, each chunk of color that you're adding in has to have its own like tiny ball of yarn so that you can make them interact correctly. Um, I haven't like deliberately not done it. It's just not a technique I've learned yet. And I'm kind of a little bit intimidated by it because it takes skill to get it to work. And also bobbins means extra ends. <laughs> and I hate waving in ends, but um, there's so many beautiful patterns out there that use intarsia and I definitely need to do it. So here are my fave five that inspire me to want to learn how to do intarsia. I have the actual pattern pages from Ravelry pulled up on my other computer monitor. So you'll see me look over here. And what I'm doing is looking at that pattern page so that I can explain it to you. First up, I have, and I thought I'd start with something that seemed really, really approachable. It is called Moonlets by Larissa Brown. Aren't they cute? So what it is, is it's this pattern to make these little bitty decorations that are the phases of the moon. And it is done, she did it in Malabrigo Yarn Rios, which is an awesome yarn, worsted weight. So you're working on a fairly heavy needle size, uh, size seven, and you just need little bits. It says 150 to 250 yards. Um, it says here, about 30 yards for each little moonlet. So that's not much. And it says it's a quick, unique cast on and set up, written instructions for new full and half moons. So you have three different moon phases, uh, a simple color chart for the quarter and three quarter. Oh, so there's five phases, but two of them are only in chart form. And that it, charts and color work, 
Written out color work is actually a real challenge for knitter and designer. So it, it makes sense that they're charted in the round construction, making them reversible and able to be stuffed with a bit of cotton. Oh, oh my goodness, little puffy ones. That would be so cute. And it's crescent moonlets utilize a technique that is technically intarsia, but only requires working with one ball of each color. So you're not going to, what I talked about where it's like you're working with one ball and then you have to have another ball for a chunk and then you're working with the other color. So since that's why I said this is really approachable, it's a very simple way to learn the technique and they are so cute. I really like the idea of stuffing them, but using them as decoration. It could be really fun to make like a whole bunch of these and like put them together and it would be like a, um, a, a little wall hanging or something. I just think they're super cute and a really approachable way to start with Intarja. And it really makes me want to, to do Intarja. So that is Moonlits by Larissa Brown. Um, I just think they're so cute. <laughs> Next, this is going to be shawl heavy. I like shawls. I don't think, <laughs> I don't think anyone uh, is surprised by that. This is Pipes by Nancy Whitman. And I think it is just gorgeous. It is simple and elegant, but also incredibly bright. Well, again, you don't have to make it bright because it's knitting and you can make it however you want. And there are several other versions of it on the pattern page that other people have knit and you can see how different you can make it. It's absolutely beautiful. So this says it's a bias knit garter stitch shawl that starts at the right tip and ends at the left edge. So it's one that starts little and grows this way. And then you have, so it's easy in garter, and then you have these really cool intarsia sections. And I love the way that it's not symmetrical. I like asymmetry, and but it's very regular and geometric, and you can play with all these colors. It is really cool. Let me see what it says yarn-wise. So she did it in Madeline Tosh Merino Light, so it's a fingering weight yarn and it's on a size six. So that is totally doable. So 29 or slash 27 meters, 29 yards, 27 meters of colors one and two, 39 yards of three and four, 43 yards of five, six, seven, 46 yards of eight, nine, 10, and 11. So scraps. This would be a fantastic pattern to use up scraps of sock yarn that you may have laying around. So that is super cool because they're really small amounts um, and it could be really cool. And so again, you're going to be using intarsia to get this color blocking effect. And since you're using so many colors, each of those little balls of yarn, is gonna have to be on its own little ball. They sell these things, they're called bobbins and they're like little, um, if you ever do embroidery, they're like the little things that you put the embroidery floss around, but it's just taking like, you can do a piece of cardboard and wrapping the yarn you're going to use around that so that they stay neat and separate and attached to your work and not having like balls of yarn going everywhere. And so you work all the, 10 of the pipes have extensions that connect them to the next pipe, which I think is really sounds interesting. Um, and I think that's where it jumps those little white well, actually, no, I'm looking at the other. Yes. So like how you've got the stripe and then the stripe of color and then the stripe of white and where that little color tab jumps. So it's connecting them together. I'm guessing that is where the intarsia is. So again, a small amount of intarsia that makes the process a little bit uh, more approachable. So pipes by Nancy Whitman, I think so much fun. Next up. Yet another thing I don't actually do, brioche. Now I know everyone's into brioche and it makes beautiful, beautiful things, but it also makes a double thick fabric, <laughs> which I really don't need in Florida, but one of these days I'm gonna learn how to do it because it is absolutely beautiful. This is Vitamin B by Simone Carrot, Carrette. I'm not sure if I pronounced that right. Sorry, Simone. And this is in Malabrigo Oroyo, which is a sport weight yarn. And it comes in one, two, three, four, 
five, six, seven, eight, nine, four, eight. It comes in nine sizes from a 29 inch all the way up to a 48 inch bust. So that is fantastic. And you're like, but Barbara, where is the intarsia? You can see in this really cool brioche inset that runs from down the side. So it's like a triangle that runs from underneath your arm down to the edge and expands. That is a two color brioche section. Since the rest of the garment is a solid color, that means that that two color brioche section has to be done in intarsia where you're jumping. So this pattern is worked flat from the top well, partially flat, it looks like, because I'm looking at the tags and it says both in the round and flat. Uh, it is, I just think, absolutely gorgeous and subtle. And again, a small way to get into incorporating intarsia into your projects. Um, worked in one piece from the neck to the armholes. Then the sleeve stitches are set aside for the sleeves to be worked in the round later. And then it's worked in the round until the start of the brioche insertion, at which point the body will be worked flat down to the hem. So that makes sense. And so working in tarja in the round can be a, a challenge. I think it is typically worked flat, but I'm not actually 100% sure. This is something that if you are very familiar with intarsia, please educate me in the comments below about working in tarja flat versus in the round, because I know there is something that you have to understand there. But as I said, I don't really know intarsia. So these, these are my patterns to help me get excited about it. It is, um, it's got some beautiful details this sweater does. If you go to the project, the pattern page, you'll see that she used the color that is in the inset and the beautiful intarsia. Also, it looks like I-cord edging around the neckline and around the wrists. And so it's those little details that really make your piece look finished and super cool and very distinct from like stuff that you're going to buy in the store. And so this one is super beautiful. What colors did she use? I don't know. I'm sure that she tells you in the pattern itself. It's knit on a U.S. size four, which is kind of small. <laughs> but absolutely gorgeous and again to give you an actually a really nicely warm sweater so this is vitamin b by simone Carette, and again the intarsia is in that brioche inset which looks really cool next another shawl because yes shawls this one it's just a showstopper i saw this and i was like oh my goodness this is so beautiful this is the thinking eye by jennifer de Sau, and it is says she said it's inspired by paul clee's exploration of color theory and this is another asymmetrical shawl it's going to start in a point and get bigger and it's worked on the bias with interlocking stripes and blocks designed to create focus on each color with a within a deconstructed gradient set of mini skeins. So if you have a bunch of those mini skeins laying around, this is something that you can use it for. And also I think that the pipes one would be great for mini skein sets, but since you need such small amounts of it, it may be not with the gradient sets, but it is absolutely, I just can't with this one. It's got these really interesting, it, again, it looks like it's mostly garter, but these blocks and the way they interact and the use of the, there's obviously one variegated that she has in there. It's just a gorgeous piece. And again, since your intarsia is like you work it to here and stop and then here to here and it's not picking up again, um, it's not going to need multiple balls quite as much. But you got to be careful where the two colors join to make sure you get those attached correctly. Because if you don't like twist those yarns together, you'll end up with a piece that just falls out because it's not attached in any way. So that is the trick with intarsia. But this one is just beautiful and it really shows you what you can do with color blocking and stripes they're not um you know you think stripes eh, whatever stripes but look at this this is just 
gorgeous and the color choices are just stunning and I love this shawl. And if this one does not inspire you to make, uh, to try out Intarja, it's just, and actually I just clicked it bigger and there is at least one spot where it's red and then the variegated and then white. So, so you'll have to have separate balls for that. So again, ramping up the difficulty level just a little bit, but look at the result. It's so pretty. It takes, let's see, between 550 and 570 yards and it's on a US size six. So that is super cool. Again, it is garter. Um, let me see if there's anything else we need to know. Mm. One set of six mini skeins. So it takes six colors says the sample used almost all the yarn see designers notes so and so she has notes in the pattern on how to use different yardages but here so the thinking eye by jennifer de and then finally <laughs> one last shawl and this one is the doozy this is after you've if you've worked up and gone a little bit more complex with each one this one seems like it is gonna you know not be the easiest thing in the world but it is so gorgeous this is kaltha palustris <laughs> i think by raven knits design it says a top down using double increases to create a wide shallow crescent shaped shawl that wraps snugly around the body um, can be adjusted by using finer or thick yarns so this is not one that's going to size you can't just keep on knitting um says the pattern directions are charted. Some experience with stranded and intarsia is recommended. So this pattern has both stranded and intarsia techniques in it. And where the intarsia is coming in is you can see those flowers. Those flowers are, because they're different colors, each chunk is gonna have to have its own little ball of yarn so that you can work them but look at what it does it's just absolutely gorgeous and it looks like she might be using the reason why you're getting different colors is that it's variegated um says two contrasting skeins of yarn are required no less than 395 yards each um uh, floral motifs can use same weight scrap yarn, allow approximately two yards per flower. If scraps are used, the flowers are worked using intarsia technique with the background color stranded behind each flower. Oh, so that's interesting. Hmm. So it looks like you might have a choice. If you're just doing it all one color. Huh. You might be able to strand, I don't know. I just think it looks really cool. And this is one of those ones that you just, you're gonna have to get the pattern. Now it does say that in tutor, there are not a tutorial. There's not any tutorials included for these techniques. You need to either know how to do the intarsia and stranded techniques, or you need to look on YouTube. <laughs> and find out how to do it or go to your local yarn store and take a class that is always an excellent idea because a lot of times the hands-on really can't be beat so but this is so where the intarsia is is to create those little the little flowers and so if you want those each little flower to be a different color you have to have a different ball of yarn as i said for each one so this is a beautiful you know i love crescent shaped shawls it's just gorgeous and so it can be done either in two colors, which I think reduces the complexity, or you can do each of those flowers in a different color. This is Caltha Palustris by Raven Knits Design. So those are my fave five patterns for right now that inspire me to want to learn how to do intarsia. Uh, I don't have a pattern of my own to show you in intarsia because I've never done it. I'd love to hear feedback. Let me know in the comments if there is an intarsia pattern that is either a great introduction or one that is just so amazingly inspiring. It just makes you, you know, have the courage to really, really want to learn this technique. If you like this video, please give it the thumbs up, click that like button. And if you would like to be notified whenever I upload a new video, please subscribe to my channel and select notifications. Thank you so much.